So number 17 then, the last question, paper one of the 2021 Higher Math Resource paper, the last one in part B, the one with the logs and the circles in it. You've got a graph here, it's a logs question, you've got a graph here, but you don't need to know it's a log graph for the first one, because all it says is this. Here's the graph of some function. You may recognise that as a shifted, it's a transformed log graph. That's mentioned in part B anyway, but for part A, that doesn't matter because all you have to do is draw the inverse function. And you can draw the inverse function for any function because all you have to do, and it's just for two marks here, all you have to do is interchange the x's and y's. The input becomes the answer and the answer becomes the input. The axes switch over. So the graph itself, the picture of the answers, will just reflect in the line y equals x. So you'll have the line y equals x, and then that graph reflected in it will be its inverse. Now notice, this has got a boundary here at 2. This is a line that it's approaching but not allowed to touch. It just gets closer and closer but never reaches it. It's called an asymptote. You have to make sure that's incorporated in it as well. So flipping that up to here, like this gives you the inverse. Just put the figures in and you get the two marks. So if that cut the x-axis at two, that asymptote will cut the y-axis at two. Make sure you show that, that in this quadrant here, that in the second quadrant, this approaches the line y equals two. That was actually worth a mark. Just to make sure you do that part. The other mark was for getting it correct in the first quadrant, put in the coordinates which will just be these reversed. If that was 3, 1, that'll be 1, 3. If that's 7, 2, that'll be 2, 7. You know, it doesn't really look like that. It's just about drawing it very well. So, y equals f of inverse function of x. And putting in those two coordinates, get the second mark. Make sure you put them in, because that's obviously a wee bitty squint that, because with that being a 2, that should have been way over here. I've not drawn them steep enough. But it's not artistry. The numbers will give you the marks. Now, in part B it says, now, that graph was actually this one here. Log base 5 of x minus 2 plus 1. So you can see it's been a log graph that's been shifted. It's shifted forward 2, because normally it would have been coming down towards the origin, and it's been shifted up 1. Because the log graph should cut at 1. So if it's been shifted 2, it's cut now at 3, and then shifted up 1 to 3, 1, etc. But all you have to do then is work out where the inverse graph cuts. Well, there's two ways you could do that. You could either get the inverse function and find that, or you could just find the original one. That would be easier. Where does this graph cut the x-axis and then flip the coordinates? So this one here, for this graph here, where does it cut the x-axis? Well, it cuts the x-axis when y is 0. When log base 5 of x minus 2 plus 1 equals 0. In other words, log base 5 of x minus 2 should equal negative 1. Now, there's only a couple of marks here. You could go through the palaver of doing whatever it is you do, turning that into a logarithm to match that logarithm. Just use the inverse. That means that x minus 2 must be 5 to the power negative 1. Either just thinking of that as I'm using the inverse of log base 5, which is exponential, 5 to the power. Or saying the power of this is negative 1. That's 5 to the power negative 1, which is a fifth, which means x is going to be 2 and a fifth. So that's 2 and a fifth, taking the 2 across. Or if you want, you can write that as 11 upon 5, which means that on the graph of the inverse one, the intersection will be the other way round. Instead of 11 upon 5, 0, it will be 0, 11 upon 5. So there's one mark for getting the, or for taking this equation specifically about there, and then getting the answer 
and then flipping it around. Now the other way would just be to get the inverse, well it wouldn't just be to just, no the other way would be to get the inverse function, that's going to be longer because you're going to have sort of two sets of buttons to have to go through. Get the inverse function and then find directly where it cuts the y-axis. So there's two ways of getting the inverse function, you can do the y equals f of x business, or you could do the f of f, f to the negative 1, well maybe I'll just put it that way. The function acting on its inverse should take you back to x. What does the function do? Log base 5 of the inverse, minus 2, plus 1 should equal x. Right, take the 1 across and subtract. Maybe I'll do two steps in one because there's only two marks here. I'll get rid of two things in one go here. I'll take the 1 across and subtract. That gives me x minus 1. And I'll take the 5 across as 5 power. So it's 5 to the x minus 1. So there's the inverse function. 5 to the x minus 1 plus 2. That gets you a mark. Oops, take it from there. And now you can just see when x is 0. So where's that intersection? The intersection means x is 0. In which case, we'll just call it y. y will be 5 to the power 0 minus 1 plus 2. So it's 5 to the power negative 1, which is a fifth plus 2 which is 11 upon 5. So the point is the point 0, 11 upon 5. Oop, where's it go? There we are. So here it would be easier just, it would be easier just to use the original function so you don't have to mess about trying to rearrange it because you know that's right because it was given but you're not sure if you did that right. Just use that to find that point and then flip it for the inverse.